We've got to start again, start again. Bloody hell. Right then, ladies and gents, welcome to the video. So this week I'm going to be carrying on with the motorcycle frame jig build project. Uh, so this week I'm going to be putting together or fabricating the upright brackets for the upright sections of the frame jig. So if you're interested in seeing that, stick around. So starting off, what I'm going to do is start cutting up some material that I've got lying around in the garage. So this is an old TV stand that I managed to acquire for free. Um, I didn't use the stand or anything like that, but the base is a nice piece of plate steel. So it's around 5mm thick, which is perfect for this. It just means I've got to hack it up a little bit to get to any kind of shape that I require for the build. What I'm doing now is cleaning up the material. This piece of plate used to have some feet for supporting the TV stand or what have you. All I've done is drilled out the feet because they were spot welded in place and I'm just kind of left with the remnants of the spot welds. So I've just taken a flat disc to that just to kind of flat them down. Now because the material has been cut with a grinder, it has left some jagged edges, which I could possibly work to, but I want to work to something a little bit more uh, kind of straighter um, or uniform, uh, a bit more polished should we say. So what I'm going to do is using two welding magnets and a ruler, I'm just going to create basically a straight edge to work from along the piece of material. I'm then going to take the material over to the bandsaw and then cut along that straight edge. So the bandsaw is my favourite tool at the minute, it is going to get a lot of use, but as well as that, it does give you very nice clean cuts, which is what I need. The reason for this is that I want to create a reference point on the material that I can measure from. It's not going to be completely perfect, but it will be a lot nicer than using a grinder. Right then, so I've got my reference edge that I can now work to. So what I can do now is using my square, I can start marking the material where I'm gonna begin cutting it. So I did run into a bit of an obstacle when it came to mounting the material in the bandsaw. So the jaws or the fixed jaws, they are clamping on the kind of cut edges or the rough cut edges that I did with the disc cutter or the angle grinder. So the material didn't sit flush in the actual kind of clamping jaws so I did have to use some packing material just to make sure that the material was square or the marked kind of area of the material was square to the blade. Okay, so that's my material roughed out. However, there are still some jagged edges on the material that I would like to clean up. So what I'm gonna do is stack the material in the bandsaw, so I'm gonna clamp it up in the jaws. Now the jaws are gonna rest on the nice clean edges of the material. So with the material stacked, I'm then gonna run the bandsaw down all four of the pieces, and that's gonna give me a really nice straight cut. And I'm gonna repeat that process on the other side as well. Right then, so I've got all my parts with really nice clean edges, so I can use those now to work from or measure up where I intend to drill the holes. So I'm using a bit of cardboard, which is measured out exactly the same size as one of the square box sections I have for the frame, and I'm just gonna use that just to kind of basically mark up where I'm gonna ah. drill or, or kind of spot my drilling locations.
Now I've got a lot of holes to drill out on these four pieces material. So what I thought I would have a go at is creating a simple jig on the drill press. Ah, that again. So using a couple of welding magnets and some box sections, I basically created a small jig uh, on the drill press and this would give me a repeatable drilling point on the four pieces of material. Let's give that a go. So with all of the plates spot drilled, there was no real reason to keep on using the jig. I could just use the standard drills because they've got nice spot drill to follow through. So from this point, I just stepped up through the drill bits, ranging from about 6mm all the way up to about 10mm. I would eventually have to come back and take those holes out to 11mm, but we'll see that a little bit later on. So moving on to the threaded bar, what I've done is basically set up a magnetic arm in the jaws of the bandsaw. So I've set the arm up in a way that's going to give me the same measured amount every single time that I perform a cut in the bandsaw. So basically I can just place the threaded bar in the jaws up to the magnetic arm and then just run the bandsaw through it and have a repeatable process again. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is just temporarily lay the jig out here. So it's just kind of all in pieces here at the minute. So what I'm going to do is just put it all in pieces here and then we'll put the uprights in. a little bit lengthy so what I'm going to do is just cut it down I'm not sure what size I'm going to do it yet possibly probably around here and then maybe well obviously a lot smaller at the back so we'll see let's let's get it cut down there she goes Last time we had a spider, I think this time we've probably got the remnants of a mouse house. Luckily no one's home. So it was at this point that I realised the tolerances were a little bit too tight. I played around with it for a little bit longer just to try and make any differences um, <laughs> using a, a rubber mallet, um, but it just wasn't an easy fit. I had to come up with another solution. Right then, as you can see, uh, I found a solution. So. Um, it's still a little bit tight, but <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so all I've done is with all of these plates, I've just drilled out these holes. So they're originally 10 mil, I've just drilled them out to 11. So they fit a lot better now. 